This video is designed to help you start a funeral home business. At the end of the video, you'll find a valuable gift. It's a funeral home business plan that you can download and will lay down for you, step by step, everything you need to know to start a successful funeral home business of your own. If you are new to this channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. As a new owner of a funeral home business, you must first identify your core mission, vision, and values when it comes to serving families and celebrating the lives of loved ones. Oftentimes, it is discussed that there are two central reasons why funeral home businesses have failed in the past. Funeral directors communicated poorly with client families, and they also failed to uncover exactly what the client family needed in those intimate moments during the services. And it doesn't end there. Several other elements and new client demands, live streaming, personalization, pre-planning, cremation, alternative services, green funerals, require funeral homes to be prepared, and realize that every single situation is unique. Before lining out your services, reflect internally and remember what inspired you to start your journey in the funeral services industry in the first place. Remember how sacred and fragile these moments are for families. From there, create a business plan that solidifies the purpose of your funeral home and outlines how exactly you will bring that purpose to life for your community. As everyone knows, there are a few key steps that one must take when trying to start a business. Once you've created a business plan, consult the following checklist when learning how to start a funeral home business from the ground up, startup costs and business financing. While startup costs can be intimidating, it's important to remember the financial upside of running a funeral home. Funeral home businesses typically service around 120 funerals per year, with each of those funerals costing around $9,000 to $15,000 for families. Based on that data, funeral homes generate anywhere from $2 million to $3 million in average annual revenue. Now that you know what cash inflow looks like, let's talk about what cash outflow factors you should consider. Your funeral home business will require a building or operating site, a parking lot, equipment for cremation and embalming, computers, a website, funeral home software printers, furniture, a hearse, cold storage, labor, insurance. Keeping those startup and ongoing costs in mind, you can effectively map out exactly how much financing your business will require to get started. Name and business entity. Once you feel confident in the startup costs, you will need to create a name for your funeral home. Complete a business entity search within your state to ensure that your name has not already been taken. Once you've selected a name, you will then decide on the type of business entity you would like to register as. Small business development consultants will generally recommend LLC formation because of the protection it offers small business owners against liability. Register your business with the state. Once you've settled on your business name and entity, you will need to legally register your business with the state to obtain an employer identification number, EIN, and set up your business from a tax standpoint. Every state has a slightly different process, so consult with your state's website or your state's small business development center to help get this lined out for you. Open a business credit card and bank account. Whatever you do, make sure you keep your personal and business assets separate. The general rule of thumb for new business owners is to open up a separate bank account and credit card for the business. This will also help with accounting and filing for taxes in the long run as well. Set up accounting and acquire business insurance. Once you've successfully registered your business and opened up a business bank account, ensure that you either set up an accounting system or hire an accountant to help manage and oversee bookkeeping for your funeral home business. Additionally, you will want to make sure that you acquire business insurance to help cover your funeral home against any liability as well. Licenses and permits required to run a funeral home. There aren't licenses needed to run a funeral home business. However, some states do hold different license requirements for funeral directors and embalmers specifically, so ensure that your funeral directors and embalmers are properly licensed. States and OSHA will audit funeral homes regularly to ensure that operations are up to code and are following rules, such as the funeral rule. Some other permits and licenses that funeral homes should obtain include sales tax permit, certificate of occupancy, depending on if you are leasing the building or buying it. The next part of the video is not specific to a funeral home business. Nevertheless, this knowledge is essential for success in the funeral home business, as well as in any other business. Ignore it at your own peril. Operating a successful funeral home business will depend on the following four conventions. 1. A practical plan, with a solid foundation. 2. Dedication, and willingness to sacrifice, to reach your goal. 
3. Technical skills. 4. Basic knowledge of management, finance, record keeping and market analysis. As a new owner, you will need to master these skills and techniques if your business is to be successful. Finding a niche. Small businesses range in size from a manufacturer with many employees and millions of dollars in equipment to the lone window washer with a bucket and a sponge. Obviously, the knowledge and skills required for these two extremes are far apart, but for success they have one thing in common. Each has found a business niche and is filling it. The most critical problems you will face in your early planning will be to find your niche and determine the feasibility of your idea. Get into the right business at the right time is very good advice, but following that advice may be difficult. Many entrepreneurs plunge into a business venture so blinded by the dream that they fail to thoroughly evaluate its potential. Is your business idea feasible? Before you invest time, effort, and money, the following exercise will help you separate sound ideas from those bearing a high potential for failure. Identify and briefly describe the business you plan to start. Identify the product or service you plan to sell. Answering yes to any of the following three questions means you are on the right track. A negative answer to all of them means the road ahead could be rough. 1. Does your product or service satisfy an unfilled need? 2. Will your product or service serve an existing market in which demand exceeds supply? 3. Will your product or service be competitive, based on its quality, selection, price, or location? Market Analysis For a small business to be successful, the owner must know the market. To learn the market, you must analyze it, a process that takes time and effort. You don't have to be a trained statistician to analyze the marketplace, nor does the analysis have to be costly. Analyzing the market is a way to gather facts about potential customers and to determine the demand for your product or service. The more information you gather, the greater your chances of capturing a segment of the market. Know the market before investing your time and money in any business venture. The following questions will help you collect the information necessary to analyze your market and determine if your product or service will sell. This brief exercise will give you a good idea of the kind of market planning you need to do. An answer of no to any of the questions indicates a weakness in your plan, so do your research until you can answer each question with a yes. 1. Do you know who your customers will be? 2. Do you understand their needs and desires? 3. Do you know where they live? 4. Will you be offering the kind of products or services that they will buy? 5. Will your prices be competitive in quality and value? 6. Will your promotional program be effective? 7. Do you understand how your business compares with your competitors? 8. Will your business be conveniently located for the people you plan to serve? 9. Will there be adequate parking facilities for the people you plan to serve? Planning your startup. The following questions are grouped according to function. They are designed to help you prepare for opening day. Merchandise. Have you decided what items you will sell or produce, or what services you will provide? Have you made a merchandise plan? based upon estimated sales, to determine the amount of inventory you will need to control purchases? Have you found reliable suppliers, who will assist you in the startup? Have you compared the prices, quality, and credit terms, of suppliers? Business Records Are you prepared to maintain complete records, of sales, income and expenses, accounts payable, and receivables? Have you determined how to handle payroll records, tax reports, and payments? Do you know what financial reports, should be prepared, and how to prepare them. Finances. A large number of small businesses fail each year. There are a number of reasons for these failures, but one of the main reasons is insufficient funds. Too many entrepreneurs try to start and operate a business without sufficient capital, money. To avoid this dilemma, you can review your situation by analyzing the following three questions. 1. How much money do you have? 2. How much money will you need to start your business? 3. How much money will you need to stay in business? In order to answer the second question, how much money will you need to start your business? You need to prepare an estimate of all your startup costs. Here is a list of items you may need to take into account. Note that this list is for a retail business. Items will vary for service, construction, manufacturing or online firms. Decorating and remodeling, fixtures and equipment, installing fixtures and equipment, services and supplies, beginning inventory cost, legal, professional fees, 
licenses and permits, telephone utility deposits, insurance, signs, advertising for opening, unanticipated expenses. Now, the answer to the third question, how much money will you need to stay in business? Must be divided into two parts, immediate costs, and future costs. From the moment the door to your new business opens, a certain amount of income may come in. However, this income should not be projected in your operating expenses. You will need enough money available, to cover costs for at least the first three months of operation. The following list will help you project your operating expenses, on a monthly basis. Typical expenses for one month may include, your living costs, employee wages, rent, advertising, supplies, utilities, insurance, taxes, maintenance, delivery, transportation, miscellaneous. Now sum up the total estimated monthly expenses, and multiply it by 3. This is the amount of cash you will need, to cover operating expenses for 3 months. Deposit this amount in a savings account, before opening your business, use it only for those purposes listed in the above list, because this money will ensure that you will be able to continue in business during the crucial early stages. By adding the total startup costs, to the total expenses for 3 months, you can learn what the estimated costs will be to start and operate your business for 3 months. By subtracting the totals of the lists from the cash available, you can determine the amount of additional financing you may need, if any. Now you will need to estimate your operating expenses for the first year after startup. The first step in determining your annual expenses, is to estimate your sales volume, month by month. Next, determine the cost of sales. You may want to use a spreadsheet to do this. After startup, the primary source of revenue in your business, will be from sales, but your sales will vary from month to month, because of seasonal patterns, and other factors. It is important to determine if your monthly sales will produce enough income to pay each month's bills. An estimated cash flow projection, will show if the monthly cash balance, is going to be subject to such factors as the following, failure to recognize seasonal trends, excessive cash taken from the business, for living expenses, too rapid expansion, and slow collection of accounts, if credit is extended to customers. Conclusion If you have carefully answered all the questions in this video, you have seriously thought about your goal. However, there may be some things you may feel you need to know more about. Owning and running a funeral home business, is a continuous learning process. Research your idea, and do as much as you can, yourself. But don't hesitate to seek help from people who can tell you what you need to know. As we conclude this video, it's time you get your free funeral home business plan gift. Go to the description below this video, to get it now. It is completely free, no strings attached. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please, like, and hit the subscribe button, for more videos like this.